Once I get finished with everything, but I sprayed it off before I brought it in because it was sitting outside and it had dust had fell on it. And you don't want to start sanding it with dust on it because you could put deeper scratches in there. Then you have to buff those scratches out. So you want to make sure it's good and clean. On all my videos, I like to show different ways of doing stuff, and I think I'm just going to use my rotary mainly for its buffiness besides up in here I'm gonna use the DA my smaller big foot because it can get up in here a lot better than the rotary and plus it's been a while since I painted it so the paint good and cured and hard so I don't really have to worry about burning through the rotary is a lot faster but the DA is a lot safer it don't heat up the paint as much as the rotary but you can get the job done a lot faster with the rotary so let me get all my tools what I'm gonna be starting for as using then I'll cut you back on got my sandpaper 1500 2000 3000 and a bucket of soapy water and two blocks but let's go over cutting and buffing right quick what your main goal is for us cutting and buffing trying to get a smooth surface with a good shine and how you do that you do that by sanding and let's go over here to the sandpaper here you can sand with 1500 2000 3000 a lot of folks use all three grits but if you can keep from it it's best to use the less aggressive grit as possible because when you start buffing it's gonna be easier to get 3,000 scratches out than 1,500, 2,000. Then it's just one step. You just go straight to 3,000. But it all depends on your paint surface. If it ain't that much orange peel, you can go with 3,000 or 2,000. And also, what you're trying to get out, I got a bug here. I can knock that down pretty easy with 3,000. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just get a sheet of 2,000. Well, I'm going to get a sheet of 1,500, 2,000, 3,000. I'll probably do 1,500 here, 2,000 here, and 3,000 there. Just to show you how it cut and how quick it cut. So let me get a, let me put some 1,500 in here. Also put a sheet of 2,000. And a sheet of 3,000. We'll let this soak for a second or two. I got the 1500 on my block. We're just going to go maybe a couple of strokes. I think we're going to leave it at that. Then we're going to grab some 2000, do it right here, and so on with 3000. Then we're going to see how that turn out. This is the 3,000. I did the 2,500. This 3,000 is really just gliding across the surface. So it's not really doing anything. But we're going to let everything dry. And we'll see what we're working with. Now you can see what the different grits did. 
that's the 1500 2000 and 3000 3000 didn't do nothing but scratch it it ain't cutting it enough to get the orange peel out but the 2000 pretty much did the same thing to 1500 so I'm gonna skip 1500 that'll be one less step I'm gonna go straight to 2000 and then I use the 3000 after the 2000 to get the 2000 scratches out so let's get started and the reason why I got this bottle here is to keep the surface wet and this flat surface I'm just going to keep it wet with this bottle alright let's inspect it you can see this area here I miss well I didn't actually miss I just didn't do it long enough and them spots there that's actually trash that landed in the clear so I gotta bring those areas down because if I don't you'll still be able to see them once I buff it gotta bring this down some more it's always good to let it dry so you can see what you need to go back over so let me take care of that I done pretty much got this front area here done. I'm not gonna do this lower section because there's no trash there. And no vertical panels. I'm gonna take you around right here. I haven't done this front right here yet though. I'm gonna take you around right here with this bug at and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get to cut the bug down with this 2000. pretty much flat now but you still can see some of the bug so I'm gonna go a little bit further than that because I got six coats of clear here so I got plenty enough clear to do it all right let's wipe it and see what we got it wants to dry
We'll let it dry up for a minute. There you have it. It's good and flat. Now I just finished it on out. Come on down with it. Also, I don't have to worry about cutting and buffing this area here because I did it when I put the window sweep on. I also did this area in my previous video. So I probably just cut up to this here. Let me give you a tip here. I can tape this weather stripping off to keep me from scratching it up, but I'm using my finger as a guide. It's keeping me off of it. It's letting me know when I'm getting close to it. It's like a bumper. That's all you gotta do. Also, the tip of this here, I don't wanna scratch that up was saying that because I have to buff it out and when you dealing with these edges here it's easy to burn through so I'm gonna style for it I just about got it wrapped up for us the 2000 sanding. I mainly got to do this part here up front. I'm trying to pick up this trash on this flat area. I'm going to use a soft block on that. I'm not going to use this rigid block because if I use that, it could cut into some of these corners. So I'm going to grab this soft block and use it with this flex block. See the flex around the edges. So I'm gonna cut into it. You can see I'm not I'm not sure if you can see the trash there, but it's a lot of it. So I cut that out. I probably won't even worry about doing this vertical surface because there's not no trash there. And very little orange peel.
just finished up with the 2000 all the way around I know I said I was going to do a two step I was going to go with the 2000 then go back with 3000 get the 2000 scratches out but I'm going to skip the 3000 I'm going to be using my rotary and I can get these 2000 scratches out pretty easy with the rotary so we're going to get rid of all our cutting material but first I'm going to I'm going to wipe it down make sure there's no trash or anything that landed back on the surface before I start buffing once I finish wiping it down I bring out all my buffing material show you what I'll be using alright this is what we got I'm gonna be using this Meguiar's Diamond Cut Compound 2.0. I done pretty much used every different brand. This is a 3M. It's empty though. But this 3M Perfect Rubbing Compound. And this Rupes Compound here. This is the cheapest out of all three of these. You can get this by $45 a gallon. This here, this little bottle here, about twenty dollars, and I think this is about sixty dollars here. But you get a lot more with this McGuire's Diamond Cut Compound, and I would say all uh, pretty much does the same. Then I got a Harbor Freight rotary buffer here. It's good too. It's well worth the money. Then I got a wool pad. Well, I got two of them here. I just wash them up put them back in the package so let me put one on the rotary then we'll get started I'm just gonna post some of this McGrath's in this empty bottle 3M so it'll be a lot easier to work with than trying to tote this gallon around That should be enough for now. And I just put this top back on. Got the pad on. Now, I guess we'll start somewhere right here. Yeah, I think that'll be good. I just put a lid on my pad and I'm going to rub it in on the surface because you don't want to start trying to buff with all this on there because it's just going to shoot everywhere shoot all over the place so you want to rub it in on the surface all right when you're buffing you want to go into the edge you don't want to just say fences i want to come this way and to the edge i don't want to go this way because it'll get hung up and you're burning to the paint so let's get started i'm going to put it on about 1500 rpms You want to start out about 1500. Right? And once you get comfortable, you can kick it up to 2500 RPMs. Now, what we'll do, we'll clean this to make sure we finish. 
I just got some counter prep. It ain't nothing but water and alcohol mixed together. Because it's, if you just use water, it won't get the compound off completely. And once you finish and you think you finish, you go out there and wash the car. Then a day or two, you have dull spots. So you want to make sure you're able to get the compound off beforehand. So we're just going to spray this down with the counter prep. Then we'll wipe it. And see what we got once the air is dry. See what we need to go back over and hit. You can't tell nothing because this pour is still wet, but once it dry, you'll be able to tell. Alright, this is just the one round with the compound. This camera ain't really picking up the color right because of the glare. But you can see the area that I did right here and right here. I have it. Same way with over here. I haven't did that. Okay, let me finish some more off and I cut you back on. All right, I'm finished this area here. I'm just taking one step at a time because that's what you want to do. You don't want to just overwhelm yourself and try to do a big section. I just done this section, that section, this section, and that section. That's how I'm doing it, just in squares. But you can tell the shine is coming back with this McGuire's heavy cut compound. And how you know if it's heavy or not, if you rub it in your fingers, and if you feel some grit, it's pretty much a heavy compound. If you don't, it's more like a polish. And what the grit is doing is cutting it up a lot faster, bringing the shine back a lot faster. But you also might be putting swirl marks in it. Then you're going to have to get them swirl marks out with the second step. But we ain't made it to that yet, so... We're just going to take it one step at a time. I got the hood completely cut with the compound. Now I guess I start somewhere. I guess I'll do this door here. Just break it up in sections.
only thing left for this compound is this front section. The headlight area and this part here. And I'm going to use my mini Bigfoot to get into this little tight spot here. Instead of trying to get that rotor up in there. Feel a lot safer. up with the compounding now what we got to do we got to wipe all this residue up from the compound because if we don't we'll cross contaminate the compound with the polish and it'll be just like we still compounding so we got to get this dust and residue up we're just going to take the panel wipe go around the entire car get it clean so we'll move on to the next step. Wipe it down. Now we'll remove this wool pad and get ready for the next step. And this is going to be our dual action cleaner polish. You can tell by the area here, it's in between heavy cut. And this compound is all the way up, so it's cut, this here cut a lot faster than this. We're going to be polishing and removing our swirl marks with this here. And I'm going to use this foam pad, the speedy foam pad. I got this from Albert Freight also. I'm going to put that on my rotary. Then we'll get started. Step two completed for us to polish. Now I take my panel prep, wipe it down once more, get it ready for step three. Let's go ahead and remove the foam pad, put it over there out the way. Now we're on step three. In step three, we're going to be using this ultra finishing polish. And on the scale, it's a four compared to the cut wise. This was a six. This was a 10. But what pad we're going to be using is this 3M Perfect Foam Polishing Pad. It's the pad here. We'll send it up on the rotary and get started. My pad's sent up on my rotary. 
each step goes by a lot faster than the previous step. Cutting is going to take the longest because you're trying to get the scratches out. So it take a lot longer than step two, than step three. Step three going to go by pretty fast. Because all the scratches is pretty much out. So let me get set up, then I'll cut you back on.
stuff.